It is absolutely mithering up here. Just come up through the forest there. And it was so muggy. By the Christ. I'm absolutely wet through. Anyway, less of me morning. Anybody recognise that ridge line? No? I'm finally in Wales. After how many years of saying I'm going to get up here for a wild camp. I'm finally here. And that up there is Cadda Idris. Apologies to any Welsh viewers, whatever I've pronounced that wrong or not. Part down in a farm, down here. Sort farmer down there, cracking bloke, five pound overnight. What more can you ask for? Top notch. So yeah, come up through the forest. Absolutely muggy as hell. Not a breath of wind, so muggy. Wet through. But we've got on to the top here. We're actually following a, a route called the Minford Path, I think it's called. And just have a brow here before we start adding off up the pontic tops. There's a, a lake or a, a big tarn, call it Linkow or something like that. But that is where we're heading first before we start adding up, up, up off onto the tops. This Minford path, like a stone staircase, a right slog. So we're at the point where the paths fork off. That's the Minford path, which is the route I'll be taking. If we were to follow this one, that takes us up to the lake or the uh, town, or Linkow. But you can go up to that town, that little lake, and there's a route up to. Cadia Idris, or Cadia Idris, called Gorge Route. Shorter but a very steep climb up to the top. But yeah, we are going to take this Minford path, which takes us up onto the ridge and right round up onto the top. Yeah, so that's the lake, or the town, Linkow, it's there, that does look so inviting, and then as you can see, the ridge, and that's where we're heading off, up to the top of here, all the way around, right to the top of Cadder Ridge, which is that one there, looks a fair old climb this, Here's a better view of Linkow. You can see just how big that is. And rumour has it, or mythology has it, that a giant called Idris used to sit in there. That was his armchair. And he used to sit and look out over his kingdom. What a seat that would have been. So as I was saying earlier, I'm taking the Minford path route. I don't know if you can see down at the bottom here. There's another path that skirts you outside at lake. You might not see it, we're shooting straight into the sun, but straight up to that collet middle there. There's a route straight up there. It's short, but it is one hell of a steep route up that. And I'm sure it's called Gorge Route. Sure, there was a sign back down at the bottom there as I was walking up saying Gorge Route, shortest but st uh, the steepest route up. And looking at it from here, I'm glad I ain't doing it. Getting closer to the summit. That's a right drop off. See a better view at Wake. I don't know if you can see. Can you make out that route there? I've just been on about that gorge route. 
That is steep, that, that is steep. This here now, a little bit of a ridge climb. Not too bad. We're not far from something now. Well, we're not quite at summit, you know, one of them false summits. That's where we're going. So, a bit of descent and a bit more ascent, and we'll be there. I reckon another half an hour or so, and we'll be there. But look at this for a view. So that is a right drop off here. That's a sheer drop off. I'm not going no closer than that. In fact, I'm getting away because I'm making me so nervous. Let's crack on along here. <laughs> so we currently stood at the top of the gorge route, one I was telling you about. And looking at it from here, it don't look that bad to be honest. When you're looking at it from the other side over there, it looks really steep. But don't look that bad really. Still glad I took the route I did though. I think I've uh, enjoyed that route a lot more than what I would have done. Blowing out my backside coming up there. Medit Cadet Idris, 893 metres. I'm going to say it, it's absolutely stunning. Stunning. I've just had a little look in that shelter there. It's a nice little spot that you could take refuge if it were rough up here. Could probably uh, get your mat out in there as well. Benches all the way right outside of it, obviously inside, like. But yeah, nice little spot, nice and flat on here. Sunsets that way. Sunrise will be over there in the morning. So I need to find my centre. Nice little spot now. So I'm just trying to find a spot to pitch, as I was saying. As much as it's nice and flat on here, I've been rechecking forecast, and uh, currently we've got a southwesterly, which is the direction it's coming in, 18 to 20 mile an hour. Although I don't think it is that. This is only about uh, 15 or something like that maximum. It is due to drop off during night, down to like 10 or 12 mile an hour. But it comes down to a northeasterly wind, which is from that direction. So I mean cricket. We'd be not in fronted, although I'd love to uh, pitch it 
looking in that direction although there's a little bit of cloud coming in there just at the minute watching sunset I don't really want to uh, have a boatload of wind blowing straight into the front of the shelter all night so I'll have another little look of that it's about 10 past 8 now so sunset's at half past 9 so we've still got loads of time but that is looking beautiful at the minute the nice bank of cloud just whispering around there stunning Hey then I've got pitched but what I've done is I've pitched on this flat bit but I've twisted cricket opposite way around so it wins it at back end on it and I'm glad I have done because look at that Absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous that is. Looks like we're on for a good sunset. Right, I'm gonna get the rest of my gear out in there now. Get me send a brew on. Get changed out of these sweaty clothes. camera taking some time lapses of this lot we just had sun go down over there but we hadn't had much of one we had a bit of colour in the sky but we didn't actually see sun go down crickets there that's your summit shelter tree got the top and I've had camera set up getting some time lapses of this just, just look at that I'm not right sure what this summit here is uh, called, but just look at that, it's absolutely stunning. I keep saying that word, but how else do you describe it? <laughs> all this low cloud, red over in distance as well, all these inversions. trick point just to get a view of that just can't get enough on it unreal stunning stunning right well it's five past ten now and I've finally dragged myself back over to the shelter fight kettle up time to get a brew on and get some tea on go yeah uh, I've, uh, I've just been absolutely mesmerized out up there it's got a little bit windy light and a little bit chilly at hands so that's why i've come back over as well but like i say i was just absolutely mesmerized looking at all that inversion there that low cloud over them summits and that coming in it's just what can you say it's just absolutely beautiful i'm, I'm just looking out behind you now and uh, that low cloud the route that i've took up today it's all I can see there now it's all it's all over that ridge and everything so I'm really hoping that this hangs about for it morning and we get a nice sunrise because that'll be something special that so yeah time to get some tea on get a brew I'll catch up with you in a bit Right, well it's half eleven now, I had my tea that earlier on, this uh, wind's got up a little bit, I reckon it's about gusting probably up to about 25 mile an hour, 
and it is changing direction like I was saying earlier on it's when I set up it was hitting corner at shelter on this side and it's now moving round to the back so it is it is changing direction but it'll be what it is like I said forecast as it due to drop off through night due to like sort of 10 12 mile an hour in morning which is no really so yeah, 8 past 11 I've just stuck kettle on and we'll, uh, get a hot chocolate a few M&M's and then that's beating pillar there's been all happening now tonight so I'm going to get this drink and that and I'll see you in the morning Well, good morning. Just about eight o'clock now. I'll set me alarm for five o'clock. See if there's going to be a sunrise, but I think sunrise was something like seven minutes past five, but it was all clogged out, so I got me back down for another couple of hours. And I've not long since woke up. I think I've had about two and a half hours keep there. But uh, last night were interesting. Last Last off when I spotted before I went to sleep, as I was explaining yesterday, I got a southwesterly wind, which was when I set up was shoving on this corner here, and then it had made its way around westerly when I was speaking to you late on, shoving back end at sheltering. But then about midnight, one o'clock, it weren't half shoving on this corner here, it had made its, like I was saying, forecast had got it to come round to a northerly wind, northeast, which was shoving on this corner here. And it weren't, it, it was battering tent. It, uh, oh, quite, this is worst I've had this cricket art in. So I, I got up, stuck my sky watch out it, just just stuck it out above shelter. I don't know if you'll see that. 49 mile an hour high gust recorded. Must have been 30, 35 easily, constant, and some heavier gusts. Like I say, it weren't half battering this, but. It stood firm. I'm really impressed with this shelter. Not that I'd ever planned to be out in them kind of winds, but like I've uh, said all too often, you can always plan to go with forecast, but then you can always uh, be caught out in it. It's always good to be prepared. But yeah, it's uh, it's um dropped off, and it's lovely and calm now this morning. 
I just wish this clag had clear and it had uh, cleared up and that sun had come out. So yeah, I just made my a brew. I'm gonna get a bit of breakfast, have a little bit of a mulch about. Hopefully, like I said, this sun clears this clag. And once I've had my brew and some breakfast, we'll start packing up, drop shelter, and we'll crack on with the rest of this ridge walk. So just touching on what I was saying there them uh, unforecasted strong winds that we had last night around midnight I'm sure many of you will have watched Paul's last video uh, we both had a good chat about kitten is it worth buying expensive kitten this and other can you do it with cheap kit and as I touched on in that video what kit I had when I first started out Van Gogh sold 200 tent if I'd have been up here in that last night, 49 mile an hour gusting winds, it'd have destroyed that tent. So although we do say, you don't really need all this expensive gear to come camping. It is also good to know that you have got gear, especially a shelter, that can withstand them type of winds. A lot of people come into mountains camping, and uh, I've seen a lot of people who, uh, really underestimate how strong these winds can be I've seen some people stating that they're out in 60, 50, 60 mile an hour winds and might only be 20, 30 mile an hour tops in 50, 60 mile an hour winds it's not comfortable at all unless you're in something that can really withstand them types of conditions and another note as well you can't always rely on forecasts I check several forecasters, MWIS, Mountain Forecast and uh, Met Office. The MWIS is a mountain weather information service and they are nine times out of ten correct. But even they didn't forecast these strong winds last night. As I was saying, they got like 20, 25 to 30 mile an hour late on last night. So that leads on to another point. You've got to remember when you come up to these places, you are in mountains. We're a few metres shy of 900 metres up here. We're talking proper mountain ranges up here. So when you rely on these forecasts, you've just got to remember that they can be a little bit unpredictable when you're up in places like this. And it's all as good to expect the unexpected and be prepared for it. I've experienced that many times over the years whilst I've been wild camping. When you're up in mountains, they can often produce their own weather systems because at altitude you're at. Winds and other conditions can be totally different to what's been forecast. So it is, uh, like I say, good to be prepared for stuff like that and make sure you do have the right kit when you come up into mountains while camping. Well, that's it, we're all packed up. That's where I was. You know, the score as always, we leave no trace. That's been a really nice, calm morning. In fact, it's that calm, there's a few midges knocking about now, so we're going to get off. But yeah, really enjoyed this one. Caddy Idris, 893 metres. What a stunning mountain range this is. I will definitely be back up here, that's for sure. Yeah, so we're going to get on. Follow this ridge line along to this next summit. I forget what they call it now. Kind of mole or something like that. But from the, uh, the follow up wall line down, there is a route down, although they're into a path showing up map, but there is a route down following to uh, wall. And then you pick the path up which we came up through forest, back down into the bottom, back along to the car. What a morning.
you can see route I took up there that's that ridge line that I walked up that uh, Minford path the Minford route looks awesome that I'd love to do that again So here we are, this is the summit of Mind Moel. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, if not again apologies. 863 metres. Nice little shelter there. Summit Cairn. And again some fantastic views from here. And sheer drop offs. Get that cliff face there. And that's where we've come from. Cadder Idris, right up top of there. Right, so now I'm going to locate this wall. I thought it were a wall, but I think it's a fence line. Might be that uh, style that I've come over just on back over there. Drop down, in fact. Looking at it, I think there's a, I can see a path heading straight down here. Yeah, I'll not see it, but there's a path heading off just straight down here. So I'm going to follow that down. When I was down bottom looking up this way, I could see path making its way down the hillside there. So I'm going to follow this back down, back to, back down to the forest. So then, look at that for a stunning view. So that's looking back on the route that I've done up the Minford route, the Minford path. I forget that that summit is in the middle there. Then Caddy Dress there. Linkow, the lake in bottom. Linkow, it translates to Close Lake. And this place were actually formed, unlike the uh, mythology that I was telling you about yesterday, that a, a giant named Idris scooped that out with his hand and then he used to sit in there and observe his kingdom. But like a lot of places, millions and millions of years ago, all this area were covered in an ice cap. And at some point, a piece on it broke away, formed a glacier, and that glacier moved about in there and cut into that landscape and formed what you see there today. Absolutely stunning, isn't it? Another fantastic piece of geological information there for you. So then we've reached the point where this path joins up with that Minford route back down there. We've only got back down in forest to walk then, back down to the road. That's where we've come from right up there. That's been a quite a steep descent that, quite rocky, quite screen places. And there's a guy halfway up there laying big stones up path, digging path out, laying stones to create a stone staircase path. He's got a great job on doing that. But yeah, I'm going to sign off here. That's been fantastic, that. As I was saying yesterday, my first solo wild camping Wales, Snowdonia, Cader Idris. I've really enjoyed this one. I can highly recommend that route up there. Minford path up onto Caddy Idris camp up there, it's a stunning place. So I'll leave you with them views. Wales, I will be back. I'll leave you with them views, and as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on next one.